Oh, it's a beautiful day here at the Symphony Hall in Boston. Uh, several years ago, I received a call. Would I come up and narrate Peter and the Wolf with the Boston Youth Symphony Orchestra, led by Federico Cortese? And uh, I've always loved Peter and the Wolf. I remember it very well. When I was a boy, I had a recording where I, Arthur Godfrey uh, did Peter and the Wolf, and I loved it. I loved the story. I could, as the story was told and the music was played, I could visualize it very, 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 very uh, uh, strong, vividly to myself. So uh, I love the spoken word. I love music. And I thought, how can you pass up an opportunity to play the Symphony Hall in Boston, because in all likelihood I'll never be asked <laughs> again. So I said I would, I came up here, and we really, uh, in a way, we kind of flew by the seat of our pants, because although the, the piece has been around for a long time, they, um, I was told we'd really like to, to kind of stretch the, the, the day out a little bit, so we worked on the script, and somehow this character evolved in my mind. I guess I wasn't comfortable telling the story as Stephen Lang. I'm much more comfortable telling it as some Cossack, some crazy Cossack. I don't know why, but that's just the way I am. And uh, this character emerged, and we, be, we rehearsed. I came down on a Friday night, and we rehearsed. And then on a, and it was disastrous. And then on Saturday we rehearsed again, and it was um, equally disastrous. And then we did the performance for how many does it see? Two thousand children and parents, and the energy of the children, and the expertise of our conductor, and the and the uh, the enthusiasm and uh, uh, musicianship of our young musicians uh, carried the day, and it was a great triumph, I think. As Peter stood there breathing in the fresh, lovely autumn air, he felt the flutter of tiny wings by his ears, and he saw the flash of scarlet feathers as a quick and lively bird flew three times around his head and then landed on the low branch of an old apple tree. Peter looked at the bird, and the bird looked at Peter, and she winked at him. Yes, she did. She winked right at Peter as if to say, what a clever boy you are, Peter, and what a wonderful day to be alive. I think that one of the things that I maybe try to emphasize with them, um, something I've learned throughout my career, is that you, you, you learn your music, you learn your lines, you learn your notes, and uh, you're, you're very diligent about your practicing, and of course everything has to be done in a very, very specific way. But then when actual performance comes, in some way you want to forget everything. You want to abandon yourself to the material knowing full well that it lives within you and just allow the material to the music uh, to, to emerge as if it's never been played before. So it doesn't sound scientific, it doesn't sound even rehearsed, it just sounds like it's music that has never, never been heard before. I think that's a difficult thing to convey to people, but it's something that I, throughout my career, 
have striven to do because a lot of times when you're doing a play you know you may repeat it two or three hundred times and you really need to keep it fresh and keep it alive so uh, it's part of the technique and I would expect that it's the same for a musician so we just spoke about that a little bit I urge them to just really when you get out there have a wonderful time because the audience will share your joy they'll sense it they'll understand it and, and they'll become part of it